<sighs> okay. This one, we're still hammering on this eighth grade common core standard for solving simultaneous linear equations. We've got a lot of experience doing this. This is a fourth video I've done on this series. And I'm sure there's millions more out there. But sometimes in these kind of problems, what happens is you get fractions. And all of a sudden, that makes it a little more challenging, a little more difficult. We don't know how to deal with fractions all the time. Some people like to get out their calculator and convert them to decimals, but that can uh, create problems, especially when you have repeating decimals or they get really long and ugly. So I'm just going to show you a simple little uh, technique for getting rid of fractions. We'll call it fraction busters. Okay. Don't trademark that. I'm copying it from our textbook that we have here. But uh, anyway, let me show you how to do this. Say so you start off with two equations like that, two linear equations in y equals mx plus b form, right? Slope intercept form. And you set them equal to each other because that's the first thing you're taught to do. And now we have a problem. Houston, there's a problem. You're playing Portland tonight. That's the problem. Um, we, need, we have these fractions. We look for a least common multiple, or you might call it the lowest common denominator. In other words, I'm going to take the 3 and the 2, and I want a number that both of them multiply into equally, and the lowest possible number. So in this case, it's 6. They both go into 6. I could pick bigger numbers, and that's fine, but let's keep it simple. Let's go with the small one. So once you do that, you take that number and you multiply it by every single thing in the equation. Everything. Using the distributive property, we're going to distribute that 6, that least common multiple, to everything in this equation, and we're going to rewrite it. So step 1 would be uh, 6 times 2 thirds is 12 thirds. I'm going to give you the in-between step here so you can see what's going on. 6 times 4. Then we have 6 times 1 half, which is 6 halves, and 6 times 9, which is 54. So you say, great, this is fraction busters. Why do you still have fractions, Mr. Witcher? Well, we don't. Um, 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. Say bye-bye to fractions, okay? They're gone. Now, these are big numbers, and that might make you nervous, but big numbers are easier to deal with, I think, than fractions. So we're going to take 24 away from both sides. We'll take 3x away from both sides. I'm just combining steps here to get, because the point was already done here. That was the whole point of this video, is right there. Solving it, you guys know how to do that. Okay, x equals 30. All right, so our uh, lesson here, short and sweet, about three minutes. When you have fractions in a system of equations and you don't like it, here's how you can get rid of it. Okay, now remember, it's okay to work with fractions. If you're comfortable with the fractions in there, just leave them. Okay? But if you don't like them for whatever reason, use this little uh, technique and maybe that will help you out. Let's do a practice problem, okay? Let's see if you can do this technique. Grab a freshie here. Fresh piece of paper, that is. I don't know what you thought I meant by that. Here we go. Y equals 2 fifths X minus 5. And y equals negative 3 halves x plus 9 halves. Okay? If you're working through your book and you saw that problem, you'd probably want to skip it, right? You'd go looking for the one with the whole numbers. Go ahead and pause the video, write that down, do your work, and come back and check with me. Let's see if we can work this out. Welcome back. Here we go. Step one, like I taught you in the first few minutes of the video, 
we just set it up like usual. We're not afraid of fractions. Then we want to find lowest common multiple. We've got these denominators, fives and twos. Hopefully that makes you think of a 10. Okay, that's the smallest number that we can multiply evenly all of these denominators into. So, to show that we're going to distribute that 10 to everything, everything across this entire equation, little parentheses, little 10 out there, and make sure we distribute. So 10 times 2 over 5, minus 10 times 5, equals negative 10 times 3, which is 30, over 2, 10 times 9, which is 90. I like 10. It's easy to multiply. Okay. Looks like our fractions are gone in one more step. 20 over 5 is 4. And now we see our new equation showing itself. Oh, there should be an x there. Sorry. Sorry. There we go. There's the new equation. We'll go ahead and solve it. But the educational objective of this video was just to get you to this point, to change it from the fractions into an equation that has no fractions. Okay, just for fun though, and for practice, let's go ahead and solve it. So I'm going to uh, add 15x to both sides. You might be looking at this going, this isn't going to work out well. There's a 19 in there. How could this possibly work? Let's find out. You know it always works out. It's not a big deal. What am I thinking? Equal sign. Then we divide both sides by 19. And bam! What a nice simple answer that turned out to be. And there you can actually see it. Let me zoom out and make sure you get the whole fraction busters process for this one. And that's our lesson for today, short and sweet compared to lots of others, but hopefully that can help you get through this situation of uh, dealing with fractions when they're contained in a system of linear equations. Take care of yourself and uh, eat some broccoli. It's good for you. Bye.